Welcome to Reclaim Your Life. I'm Mal Duane, your host and producer. I'm the author of Alpha Chick, and I'm a life recovery coach. But I think of myself more as a spiritual messenger, helping women to discover their purpose and to live better lives. When we release the past, we can fully embrace the present. All of my guests this season will share their own journeys of self-discovery, how they push through their pain with perseverance and now live as self-loving, empowered women with a purpose. I'm so honored to introduce you today to the queen of self-love, Christine Arlo. Christine is a transformational teacher. She's a speaker and a best-selling author. After earning her MBA and climbing the corporate ladder, she chose to devote her life to creating a new reality for women and girls, one based on self-love and true feminine power instead of the relentless pursuit of having to do, be, and have it all. She's the best-selling author of two books, Choosing Me Before We, and madly in love with me. The daring adventure to become your own best friend and co-founder of the Inner Mean Girl Reform School, which has helped over 23,000 women transform their inner critics. She's also the founder of the International Day of Self-Love, February 13th. Christine's been featured on CBS, ABC, Fox, and E, the Huffington Post, and on radio shows and stages around the world, including TEDx. She formerly lives in North, Northern California with her partner, Noah, but recently they sold their house to live their dream of living, working, and speaking from anywhere in the world. Now that is exciting. So, Christine, I'm so honored to have you on today. I just love your message for women. You rock it, girl. And Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you. And I got the invitation to come and just talk about self-love, and not just talk about it, but hopefully share some real ways that you can actually make it practical and tangible in your life. I was like, yes, 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 yes. yes. It is my... It is my great love and, and mission in life to create a world in which self-love is a tangible reality for every single woman and girl, and the men too, if they want to come along. Because <laughs> um, I think a lot of us, we talk about self-love and people are like, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself, and but like, what does that really mean? How do you do it? And, and that's really what um, my mission in life is to, to make it tangible and real for people. Now, I have a quote from your best-selling book. And I just love this. This is from the Madly in Love with Me manifesto. We believe that every woman has the right to fall madly in love with herself, to be so in love with who she is, to deeply honor her body, mind, and spirit, that every choice she makes reflects that deep, that same deep honoring. We believe that not only that she's entitled to love herself, but also that she's empowered to love herself simply because she is. So, oh, Hmm. I mean, magnificent. Now, something happened that gave you a wake-up call to all of this. We all have situations in our life that inspired us. Tell us a little bit about your journey. Well, my journey was a really important journey for me and I think for the work I, I am ending up doing in the world because most of my life I thought that if I had high self-esteem, that I was pretty good, you know, because <laughs> like mm-hmm. I was a confident person and by my definition, self-esteem is the belief that you can do and be and have anything. It is confidence and people who have high levels of self-esteem, they, they don't experience lots of self-doubt and they kind of they go for it. And what happened is, is that I um, really – created an overdeveloped sense of self-esteem. And I had so much self-esteem that I really lacked things like self-compassion. So high achiever, super high achiever, but really hard on myself. Lacked, um, really lacked self-respect and self-honor, so I almost married the wrong person. 
for all the wrong reasons because um, I made getting love from him more important than loving myself, even though that relationship was full of abuse and not, not physical abuse, but it's emotional and verbal abuse. And it was holding me back from my dreams, and I knew it, but I couldn't leave because I didn't have self-empowerment. I didn't have self-compassion. I didn't have self There was a lot of self-love I didn't have, and I had never even considered self-love. No one had ever talked to me about growing up. They just told me they have self-esteem, and I'm like, okay, I got that. And when my relationship ended, um, that abusive verbal relationship ended about 11 years ago, and it wasn't me doing the ending. I was, it was actually on the way to our engagement party that, that he broke off that relationship, and it was the biggest gift of my life didn't feel that way at the time, um, but a couple weeks in, I remember having a really honest conversation with myself, and I was sitting in bed one night, really upset, and, you know, had that, that feeling in my heart, you know, when, like, you've had a relationship that's ended, or something's, you know, gone wrong in your life, and you feel like that big hole in your heart, and this voice came to me, and the voice said, well, Christine, you know, that hole isn't him missing, that hole is you missing. And the truth is is that you do have a lot of self-esteem, but you don't love yourself. And you not only only almost married the wrong person, you almost created the wrong life for yourself. You're giving up on your dreams to to get this love from this other person. And everything this voice, of course, which is my inner wisdom, which is, of course, divine spirit speaking to me, was true. And on that night, I made two promises to myself, two self-love promises. I'm a big fan of self-love promises. I made two. One, which is I would fall in love with myself no matter what, even though I had no idea what it meant. And number two is I would never settle for less than my heart and soul desire. I'm going to say that again. So if you have a pen, you might want to write that second one and the first one down especially. But the second one is I will never settle for less than my heart and soul desire. Mm-hmm. If you've even taken that vow, that is the, that is the, that is the first vow of self-love. And what that means is that you actually have to know what your heart and soul desire. So that began for me, my self-love journey, which started in, and what, 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 who am I? What is my heart and soul desire? And really realizing that the life I had created for myself was based on the life that the society said would make me happy and successful. But clearly, even though I had all of the, the money and the cars and the big houses and the relationship and the friends and the this and that, the degrees, the jobs, it, I wasn't happy. And, um, and that began in 10 years. I've still kept that promise ever since. And along the way, I've, I've learned what self-love is. I've learned what it's not. I've learned how to do it. And that's what I'm here to share with you all today. But that was the, that was, that was the catalyst. But so many women do what you, what you did. You were in a relationship that was mentally and emotionally abusive, and yet you didn't want to leave. And that is such a common thing for women. They're afraid to get out of those relationships, and they go for years and years and years suffering. They do. I have watched some of my best friends, the smartest women I know, beautiful, lovely people. I mean, it's why I I ended up writing Choosing Me Before We, which was my, my first book, which actually is all about what I learned about relationship and love, because I just watched everyone around me, and, you know, people around me, they were doing the same they were doing the same dysfunctional thing. And so my mother and aunts and uncle no one could really teach me. No one really taught me. And and when I realized that I had never taken the second vow of self love, which you all would want to write this down to, which is I only have loving, respectful relationships. And now that first vow I will never settle for less than my heart and soul desire and I will only have loving, respectful relationships when you take those vows, which I did Then it made it clear as day to me that I couldn't be in a relationship in which I wasn't honored, in which I wasn't respected. But the thing is, is I had to respect and honor myself first because that person, that relationship was just a reflection of my own lack of self-respect and self-honor, which was befuddling to me because I had self-esteem and I was successful. And I can tell you the number of people I meet that they're like, you know, they do their jobs, they're the key to keep it together because what we do as women, like we're just taught to like keep a stiff upper lip don't, you know, don't cry, don't let them see you sweat, you know, and like, the, and, and what's happening to women all around the world is that they're inside, they're suffering, and then our daughters are, te- we're teaching them the same exact thing, mm-hmm. and it's, 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 um, it's, it is alarming to me that one in three girls will be in an abusive relationship by the time she's 20, and 80% will go back. Yeah. What is, the it, it, 
what is the first thing that a woman needs to do if she's in that kind of situation? Is there is there a trigger emotionally or physically if, if you're not feeling right and your body is telling you something? Or do you start to make these vows that you're talking about when when you know you, that you're in a bad yeah. relationship? And and, it, and I want to also preface that it's not just sometimes it's a bad relationship, right, because it's a, it's a spectrum, you know. It's a spectrum from, like, you know, there's the – we all of you think of, like, bad relationship as, like, you know, the Jerry Springer, you know, I'm, I'm being beat. You know, and I would say that to myself, I'm not in an abusive relationship. But I'm not being hit, but I was clearly in an abusive relationship. But I didn't, but because I didn't have black and blue marks, I didn't, st- I didn't see it that way. And, and it wasn't always that way. We just, we just fought a lot. And it was, um, and, and there's those kinds of relationships that are bad, that you're clearly, like, not, are, 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 there's a lot of anger and emotion. But there's also just relationships that aren't the right fit. You know, and that we hang on to because we're like, but I love you and I love you, and like we just we just grip onto them. And the, and the person's not a bad person, and you're not a bad person. It's just that the relationship isn't the right relationship for you being able to actually go into the world and live your dreams. And that's why the first the first vow is so critical. Of I only I will never settle for less than my heart and soul desire. And your dreams come from your heart and your soul. And so your job, and you're the only person that can do this, is to remember who you are, to truly remember who you are and why you came here. You were given a great gift. Like you had a ticket to come to this planet. You know, I think of it like a big, huge carnival amusement park, right? You know, It's like you got this gift of life. And how are you going to use that gift? You know, for me, I'm, I get to be on the phone now talking to you. I write books. I travel the world. I take people to beautiful locations on retreats. I, I'm, you know, I'm sitting here this morning and I'm, I'm writing. Like, I, like, I'm living in this wine country, looking at these beautiful grapes right now. I've traveled the world. I almost ended up selling cheese for a living, and not even real cheese, like cheese, like that's I don't even know, that's like chemical. But that's what I would have ended up selling if I had not left that relationship. And so, it's not even that you. Know, it's like that's what I what I, what I want to really underscore for all of you is that the first, the, and that's why the book is called Choosing Me Before We, is because it has to be me before we, and not me before we in a selfish way, although I think being selfish is important sometimes, focus on the self, not in a conceited, vain, narcissistic way, but in a way in which the first question you ask is focused on me. What is the life you want to have? What, what are your dreams? What, how do you want to live? What is your heart and soul calling for? And that's the first pronoun. That's the first place you have to really look because else you can't make any kind of discernment about the partnerships or friendships or relationships in your life. And then, once you you have an idea of who you are and what you want, then you can say to yourself, okay, what kind of partnerships do I want? What kind of relationship do I want? Do I want to be married? Do I want to just date? Do I want to have lots of friends, a few friends? Who do I want to be friends with? Do I want a companion? You know, women will say to me, gosh, I just really want a boyfriend. I'm like, really? You want a boy who's your friend? I don't really think that's what you're asking for. I think you really want a partner or a companion or a lover. You know, look, let's be specific, ladies, about what we want. And then we go to you know the men and women in our lives that we're trying to mate with, and then we don't really we're like we don't know why we're not getting what we want, but we're not even clear about what we want. And then you can go to the third question and ask, okay, well then who is the he or the she? You know, who's that person? that's going to align with the kind of partnership I want, that's going to help me be my best me and get to my dreams, then who's the person? Then you can start talking about who that person is. But that's the third piece, not the first piece. You know what's interesting is I've said this all along. I think women spend more time picking out a a handbag or a pair of shoes than they do deciding about the qualities they want in a partner. They do, and here's, here's uh, it's true. I mean, it's true, and there's all, and I'll add to that. I love that. I love that. Much. I love that. And I'll add to that is that we think that we're out there looking for love, which is part of the mistake that we make. Because if you are looking for another person to give you love, that's a lot of power to give to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And this is why we can't leave relationships or we can't end friendships or we end up with relatives who treat us like crap and we allow it to happen is because we are afraid of losing love. And losing love and the, or the belief that you could actually ever really lose love is one of the most painful experiences that we can go through as humans. For anyone who's ever been broken up with or experienced loss and you feel like love has been taken away, it's like one of the most excruciating pains ever. 
But that's because we misunderstand love. See, love can't come from just one person. If you expect one person to give you love, then you've just given away your power. That person dies, they go away, then all of a sudden there's this huge hole in you. And really what's true is that person just adds more love to your life. It's really about creating what I call multiple streams of love so that you become wealthy in love and that you have multiple places where love is coming in so that if something, if someone does leave your life, a friendship, a mate, or whatever, that you're not left with this big, huge, gaping hole believing that love has been taken away. It doesn't mean that you don't grieve, and it doesn't mean that it's not difficult to let go of, of things. Of course it is. But it doesn't have that same deep suffering or fear around it. And the easy the thing, the thing is that I really know and I learned about relationship is that loving somebody else, falling, quote, unquote, falling in love is, is the easy part. It's the trust and the friendship and the connection and the intimacy and the respect that's way harder. But we as a culture are so focused on love that we, we think that that's, that's where all the work is. And that's the easy part, you know. That's easy. It's the other pieces that are much harder and, and that make it much harder to be in, in really good relationship with somebody. How true. How, how does a woman create multiple streams of love coming in? That's a fascinating concept, and I love it. How can a woman do that? So, you know, people always talk about multiple streams of income, right? If you're an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. it's like, you have to have multiple streams of income or diversify your portfolio, right? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, the interesting thing about the word wealth is if you look up, I'm a big wordy person. I love looking up the definitions of words because I believe that they actually tell us a lot about what our society believes. And if you look up the word wealth in the dictionary and you trace it back to its roots, the root meaning of wealth is happiness. And then somewhere in the 1700s, it became to mean, wealth became to mean accumulation of money, the pursuit of money. So imagine that for a second. Wealth used to mean happiness. And then somehow it became about the accumulation of money. So then wealth in our society became about accumulating money, not even having money, which is why the people that actually do have a lot of money don't often feel wealthy because it's always about accumulating it. But the root Wealth is about our happiness. And anyone, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's like that old adage, but it's true, money doesn't make you happy. Money helps out a lot, but money by itself, and I know a lot of people who have a lot of money that are some of the most unhappiest people that I know, and some people who don't have hardly any money and can be the happiest people. So if you think about what really, what we really need as human beings, it all comes from love. Everything comes from love. And so when I got this, when I really got this, and I had gotten how I put in all of my stock, really, my love stock in this person, my ability to feel loved on that one person, I decided I was going to become wealthy in love. Like that was how I was going to live. And I looked around my life and I saw the places in my life where I had the wrong people in the wrong places, where I had um, holding on to the wrong relationships, and I realized that I needed to create these multiple streams of love. And when I think of multiple streams of love, they come from three places. First, there's your love stream with yourself, right? And that's self-love. And that's why I spend so much time talking about self-love and teaching self-love is that you have to be able to source love from inside yourself. So those things that you want to get from other people, like affection, compassion, care, respect, you have to be able to give those things to yourself first. So if you can go ahead and just write this down on a piece of paper, like you can write like multiple streams of love and like, like write like three little streams, and one would be self-love, sourcing love from self. The second stream is from spirit, and that's your connection to the divine. And I don't know how to actually truly love yourself without a connection to the divine. And I don't care. It's not about religion. It's about really a connection to something bigger than you. And for you, that can be God. That could be the great mother. That could be the great father. That could be like just something that we feel like is there to take care of us at a bigger level. Mm-hmm. And if you are not tapped into that and you don't feel connected to that, you, you, you can't not but feel lonely and isolated and insecure. And so creating and receiving love, divine love, from spirit is also really, really essential. And then the third stream is love from others. And love from others usually has multiple streams. Like, you know, it's almost like there's like multiple places. So there's there's the relationships to your friends. There's your relatives. There's your soul family. There's mates. There's, you know, people who are business 
friends. There's like there's your community, your tribe. There's all kinds of different people. There's your your dog being, your cat being. Like those are all the come from that stream of other and um, and really getting that you need all of those those streams to be flowing and have access to all those streams so that when you're feeling lonely, isolated, doubting, depressed, whatever, you can pull on, go into one of those streams to nourish yourself to love. Oh, that's oh, I just love that. That is absolutely beautiful. And the fact that you're touching upon spirit because if we do not discover that divine love that's within us that we're born with. We all we all have it. It's inside. We're never taught how to access that. And if we spent more time learning how to do that, I truly feel the world would be a different place. Oh, well, it would. I think one of the biggest, especially for women, one of the biggest um, diseases, the, un, the untalked about disease that we don't talk about is isolation. Mm-hmm. And loneliness, and I have had the great pleasure of and honor of in the last couple of years creating something called Inner Mean Girl Reform School with my partner Amy Ehlers, in which we really started to focus deeply on self compassion and self acceptance, and uncovered the um, just the, the the epidemic of self bullying and self criticism and self sabotage that we take as women and girls. I mean, it starts as young as seven. I've we've spoken to probably over twenty three thousand women now on six continents. And what we see every time we bring a group of women together or they start doing the work of really reforming that, that inner critic voice and, and, and we name them and we give them personalities. I have five inner mean girls, one of them is mean Patty, she's my comparison queen. <laughs> and um when I have Louise start, you have Louise, <laughs> I awesome. Have Louise. awesome. Very bring critical girl. Very critical little girl. <laughs> And when we start in the see that we're laughing now, like all of a sudden, yeah. like we've connected. And what what I what I've noticed is that women think that are the only ones that are having these crazy thoughts, the only ones beating themselves up, the other ones, the only ones not feeling like they're doing enough, that they're not they're not achieving enough, that they're failing, that they're a fraud, that they're you know like all those fears that come up. And when women start to give their inner mean girls names and embody them and start to play with them, it's like all of a sudden the isolation starts to melt away because we realize that. These other women are having the same experience that we're having, and we're talking about the things, which is why, like I said, yes to being here today with all of you, because we're talking about things that we don't talk about otherwise. And if we're not talking about them, and here's, you know, here's the thing, as women, our power comes from connection. Our power, your power, comes from connection. It is, it is, where the femi- it is a foundational piece of feminine power. And as over the last thousand, couple thousand years, that power has been, you know, been torn apart, and we've been pitted against each other. And, and mm-hmm. so, instead of connection, we have comparison and cattiness and, and criticism and yeah. gossip. Yeah. And I'm just really taking a stand, and I invite all of you to, to just to be part of the stand to, to 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 stop the comparison, to stop the cattiness, to stop the competition, to stop the gossip, and to actually lean in to our relationships with other women to be honest, to be vulnerable, to share what's going on, because if we don't, the same stuff that's making us crazy inside, that's keeping us back, that's limiting us, it's it's going on inside of our children. It's going, because they're watching you. They're watching you. They're They're watching us. Oh, excuse me, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, love. Go ahead. There was something absolutely horrifying that was on recently on social media, all these videos of these very young, young girls from the ages of about 8 to about 14. And in these videos, Christine, they're saying, do you think I'm pretty? Do do you think I look nice? It was gripping how insecure, how lost they were. And this is exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is exactly. I mean, the statistics aren't aren't going down. I, I made no. a movie a couple of years ago, a two and a half minute movie called "Imagine a World of Love," and I did all this research for "Madly in Love with Me" day and the self love movement. And I was like, "What is going on? Like, one in three girls will be in an abusive relationship. Eighty percent will go back. One in three um, women will be sexually abused. Four out of five fifth graders will think about dieting before they ever get to the sixth grade." 
And, I mean, this, this go on and on and on, and, and I'm like, well, what's happening? Like, why are these statistics going down? One in four women will die of heart disease, and almost 70 to 80 percent of disease is, is stress-related because uh, we are all, like, trying to live these unsustainable lives. And, like, it's like we're not coming together as women to say enough is enough. Like, like enough is enough. Like, I, I come from marketing and advertising. That was my background, and so I I understand why companies do what they do to – to promote their products, and I was talking to a friend of mine the other day about Victoria's Secret, and about the we were talking about lingerie and the underwear and their advertising, and they're going younger and younger and younger to to advertise sex basically to you know young girls, mm-hmm. and and not to mention that the underwear that they promote is like really uncomfortable, and none of us really want to wear the underwear anyway, right? And and, and the body image they promote and the body image piece. Oh. And I, I you know I said to her, you know, I said, you know, I have my MBA from Kellogg. I'm trained marketer. And 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 I sat in rooms with these women that were you know I never did that kind of marketing I I did mostly consumer stuff I, I when I worked at the Gap I'm Gap I think has very positive advertising and marketing but that do they get what their advertising and their marketing is doing to children mm. and their mothers and fathers that are working in those companies and i and i really like i'm this is the work kind of i'm really getting very passionate about is that we have to take a stand to say you know what no i don't care if that sells that's not the way i want the female body to be represented it's not good for women it's not good for men it's not good for anybody in our culture and 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 that's you know the the can cure me, the, the spiritual activist in me like i just get so pumped up and 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 that's you know so i'm like what do i do with that you know it's like and so for me i'd like to put some play in it and that's why I, you know we created self february 13th is the international day of self love which you're all invited to participate in put that on your calendar yes, it's yes. for self love i'm excited about this yes and you know you have got so many things going on you've got a a big program going with uh, Gabrielle Bernstein, a, a 40-day uh, class going with her, and self-love day, and all kinds of good things. And on top of all of that, you've got a wonderful free gift for our listeners mm. today, the self-love kit. And I want you to tell them a little bit about that. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, I really believe if you're on this call, I don't have to convince you that self love is a good idea. You guys, are like <laughs> thumbs up on that, right? And and I'm really here to to be of service to help you make self love a practical reality in your life. And and madly in love with me, the the second book that I wrote, which is really the answer to you know how do I love myself and in what ways do I love myself and in what ways don't I love myself? Because self love isn't like a black or white thing. It's not like either you love yourself or you don't love yourself. It's it's not an achievement. You don't ever get there. But there is a way to really understand um, the ways that you love yourself and the ways that you don't. And I teach something called the self-love tree, which are the ten branches of self-love. Like I was talking about earlier, self-esteem, self-compassion, self-care, self-pleasure. And just like a tree, you know, you, all those branches need to be loved and grown. And many of us have branches that are stronger than others and, and some that we've just totally ignored. And so the self-love kit actually goes into the self-love tree and it talks about the different branches. There's also a meditation in there that I, I did actually at an event that Gabby and I did together that brings you through a meditation to look at your self-love tree and help you decide and hear which branch of self-love is really needing your love and attention and then also um, helps you make a self-love promise to keep to yourself um, to help really grow that branch. And then every year there's a, a new song. We, have a, we dedicate a new song for self-love and a new poem for self-love. So that's in there as well as well as some fun posters and just other things to help make self-love a tangible reality for you. And um, that is the, that's the free self-love kit. And do they get that on your website or where yes, do they? What will happen is they're going to have a direct link to you. Okay. And please um, tell everybody your web address and, and how people can reach you. Yes, go to um, the best place to go is chooseselflove.com. That is the official um, home of the International Movement of Self Love. And that has everything self love. The self love kit is on there, videos, my self love blog is on there, um, all my programs are on there, courses, like you mentioned, the 40 day course, and other things. Just full of self-love. And I would love to invite any of you that want to have a self-love party um, on February 13th to, or, or any day in February to join us as a love ambassador. And um, I'll be sending out more information about that. But the, everyone who downloads the kit, you start to receive weekly um, love letters from me. 
Um, and so you'll just be invited to be part of the whole self-love movement in any, any way you want to participate. Oh, wonderful. Christine, you're an inspiration girl. I just oh, love what thanks. you're doing. This is something that is so needed by women, by young women especially right now. They're so caught up in, in perfectionism and and images that they see in advertising and marketing, and they think that's the way they should be, and it creates such insecurity. So I just love your movement. I'm going to be part of February 13th, I can tell you that. And I thank you again so much for uh, all the beautiful work. Welcome to Reclaim Your Life. I'm Mal Duane, your host and producer. I'm the author of Alpha Chick, and I'm a life recovery coach. But I think of myself more as a spiritual messenger, helping women to discover their purpose and to live better lives. When we release the past, we can fully embrace the present. All of my guests this season will share their own journeys of self-discovery, how they push through their pain with perseverance and now live as self-loving, empowered women with a purpose. I'm so honored to introduce you today to the queen of self-love, Christine Arlo. Christine is a transformational teacher. She's a speaker and a best-selling author. After earning her MBA and climbing the corporate ladder, she chose to devote her life to creating a new reality for women and girls, one based on self-love and true feminine power instead of the relentless pursuit of having to do, be, and have it all. She's the best-selling author of two books, Choosing Me Before We, and Madly in Love with Me, The Daring Adventure to Become Your Own Best Friend, and co-founder of the Inner Mean Girl Reform School, which has helped over 23,000 women transform their inner critics. She's also the founder of the International Day of Self-Love, February 13th. Christine's been featured on CBS, ABC, Fox, and E!, the Huffington Post, and on radio shows and stages around the world, including TEDx. She formerly lives in North, Northern California with her partner, Noah, but recently they sold their house to live their dream of living, working, and speaking from anywhere in the world. Now that is exciting. So, Christine, I'm so honored to have you on today. I just love your message for women. You rock it, girl. And Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you. And I got the invitation to come and just talk about self-love, and not just talk about it, but hopefully share some real ways that you can actually make it practical and tangible in your life. I was like, 